Okay, greetings in the name of the Most High. Uh, Zef coming to you from Spreaker, which will then be uh, also uploaded to Podbean. We've added another platform uh, to expand, and Podbean was a nice, is a nice, is a nice, you know, uh, place. There's a lot of people that listen, and uh, we get. It seems that more and more people are listening there, but it's it it. Spreaker just makes it so that we can be on YouTube. We can be on. Facebook, we could be a lot of places immediately when the podcast is finished. And with a little bit of adjustment of my uh, devices, I can have uh, intro, outro music and things ready to go, which I, uh, which um, uh, people like it. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, make that effort. But for today, just announcing that we're speaker.com uh, forward slash Zeph Daniel, you know, one word, please subscribe there. And then you have the option. So when a podcast is done, I'm not waiting for Angie, my assistant here that helps me with the web and everything, to get everything in order and get it to you. She's going to do that with uh, Podbean, so you have the high-quality MP3 with the metadata, the picture, the you know, so that if you have an archive of these things, you can really, you know, it's pretty nice. But what it's going to be is um, you can get it immediately if it's 3:20 at it's if it's 3:20 a.m. You have it at 321. So it's going to make it even more immediate. And then, like I say, I've got to learn how to put these uh, uh, sound effects or, you know, this 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 sound. But I realize now that, um, well, we'll see. We'll see what we have in the way of uh, post-production, if there's a way to, you know, I'll, I'll learn, you know. But there's, there's uh, it's kind of the next generation platform. I know Kunita, my guest the other day, he... He went there, and he really kind of was raving about it. You can do live broadcasts as well. I don't know that I will do that because I don't know who's awake at 2 a.m. Are you awake at 2 a.m.? <laughs> are you awake at 1.30? Are you awake at min? You are. Shame on you. You must be an insomniac. Okay, so I tried earlier a pod, and, and I you know I realized we had the, the passing of David Bowie and... Uh, a lot of people have a lot of things to say. It took me back. I did recount on an earlier pod that I'm not putting up because I said some things that now I probably wish I hadn't said. Uh, you know, there was a pod yesterday where there was profanity on it. I suppose it I, it did it did go up, and uh, I apologize for that. And um, that just shouldn't be. And I you know it seems lately I've had more issues of that. Uh, saying the F word and various things. And I try not to because there's a couple of reasons. One, you don't need to go there, you know. I think the frustration that I feel, I think it's more reflective of like a general frustration because the public is hell-bent on its own destruction and I, they're going to take you and me with them. And it's because of their stupidity in general, like the 90% are stupid. So we, we you know... We have that enlightened 10%, and then we, we, our podcast appeals to a very small, like, segment of that 10%. And it's, you know, the people that have been um, through no fault of their own and, and through nothing that they have done to deserve it. Bullied, uh, you know, sidelined in, in, in life, uh, kicked in the teeth in career, uh, you know, in, 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 in their careers, um, They've been, um, you know, uh, they've they've tried to to earnestly go pray and worship with with other believers, only to be uh, maligned and 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 told to go away. Uh, and it's just because they are people, and they have their their personalities may be a little bit different than the norm, uh, for whatever reason. But uh, you know, people that have been gang stalked, um, like I say, people that have been, have been through electronic harassment, witchcraft. Uh, mind control, multiple personalities, um, you know, had their lives ruined by others that, that, that they no longer could have a career path, no longer could be viable income-wise. Uh, it, it's just a horrible evil that's kind of lurks underneath our society, okay? And that's why I did a, a song that I kind of released under the radar. I didn't release it on, um, what is it, SoundCloud, because... I have friends there that, you know, we, we kind of support each other as musicians. I don't want to, you know, burden them with having to come over and make more comments on my... But it turned out <clears throat> really good. It's just that 
it was kind of a throwaway track, you know, and, and I've been getting compliments as to the mix and everything. I'm like, I don't know what I did. I just, you know, I did a, I did a deliberately analog mix last time in the rock thing, and it had to be, you know, it was did, sort of down and dirty and messy and all that intentionally. And then this it was a, a, a club mix. I mean, but, you know, it's... It's not like one takes more skill than the other. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, but yes, <clears throat> I'm a chameleon as a singer and I have millions of different voices and I, and it's terrible, but I, I, I don't know what to do. I can't settle. I just told you, I just really going to play analog and I've been playing bass today, and, you know, cause I've kind of got the bass bug and now I'm kind of like, I, I just, it's out of control. I'm sorry. I just, I'm not very disciplined, I guess. But you're the beneficiary because you get variety. So we have a variety show, so I'm entertaining you, you know. But this podcast appeals to um, – welcome to the Zeph Report, by the way. Uh, Zeph Daniel, your host. Uh, first episode to, to use Spreaker's um, studio. I'm using it now on the iPhone, and I've tucked myself away here. And it's, it's, it's about one ten in the afternoon. I've been through the whole news cycle. I was up at 3 in the morning. I did, you know, hours of broadcasting then that you won't see because I was a horse's ass. And, and that does, you know, happen to me occasionally where I, I, I don't know. Why, why am I in the position of a speaker? You know what I mean? I've got a, <clears throat> you know, I've, I've got a very expressive way of, 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 of using dialogue and, 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 um, and, and a, a very pretty good grasp of, of, you know, our language and, and vocabulary. And I can get in a lot of trouble with that. I mean, it's terrible, terrible, my sarcasm. And, and I just don't want to, I just don't want to become a cynical sarcasm, you know, like everything, putting everyone down and everything, you know. Uh, I know you like to hear it occasionally because I'm talking not about you, I'm talking about them out there. So then you like that. But I just did a song that does that, right? You know, so... And it's a song that you understand. I already had a guy who's a... I already had a guy that I, I respect and trust. He, he liked it and he, he reblogged it on YouTube with the lyrics. He put the lyrics on, on, on over a picture of me without me asking him to do that. He's another musician and uh, he didn't have to do that. That's, that's very nice of him. And uh, he really, I guess, identified with the song. It was just... I had no idea what I was doing or why it would resonate and why it has so many plays on Spreaker already. I don't know why it, you know, it should have had 10 plays and been obscure because we, but it's, and you never know when there'll be one that resonates. So this one, I guess, resonates with people. So, you know, have at it. I, I, I will bring you more. Um, there's more where that came from, you know. Uh, I do have a lot of things to, to say and express regarding this situation. We are here at the Zeph Report, if anything, kind of a champion for this underclass of people that, that you know, we know personally that, that are just having a really hard time. And to my way of thinking, now is the beginning of the good times for you and for me. Why? Because it's the seesaw effect, my friend, because as society breaks down, it's easier on I know, I know. It's easier on people like me. That it's easier on you if you have, you know, and, and I know there are people that, that you know, they're, they may have slight autism problems and different things, and they, they also tune in. And uh, so we, you know, and, and they get picked on for being different, you know, and, and they get bullied, and they get people make noises and start whistling, and, you know, you, you get that in my new song. The song's called Laughing Stock. Zeph Daniel, Laughing Stock. Laughing Stock by Zeph Daniel. Laughing Stock, Zeph. Yeah, I played the fool for them, and I've been the laughing stock for them. It was not my, uh, my intention to wind up like that. Not my intention to, I wanted to work. I wanted to, to enjoy friends and family like anyone else. But apparently there's some kind of rule that conform, social conformity goes well beyond just giving your soul to the devil, you know, looking the other way, go along to get along and all that. I'm not going to cuss all that stuff. I'm not going to say I caught that. goes well beyond that. It goes into the manner in which you speak. Are, are you too smart? Are you too dumb? You know, you don't fit in the norm. And, you know, the people that are real social and stuff, they're, they're so shallow 
And so stupid, part of what you're up against is stupid people saying stupid things they don't know will devastate you because they're out of touch with themselves and they're being controlled by demonic spirits because if you sign on, um, you, that's what you get. You get controlled by demons, you know? And what you're seeing in our society, the breakdown of Europe, the invasion of Germany and destruction, the bringing in of the evil you see going on is all demonic. So... People say, well, how, can, how come Congress doesn't do anything? First, you know, majority of Congress and Senate in uh, over 100 years, and Obama's gotten more with them than he did when he had a supermajority. How is that? It's called sorcery, my friend, and witchcraft. He gets that because he has control. Power's been ceded to him because they're expecting Obama to go on <clears throat> and, and be, you know, the, he's got a number of people that want him to be king of the world. And with the first appointment at the UN. So why is that? <clears throat> you know, now, you know, why is that? He has power over the Congress. He has power over the judiciary. He has power over, you know, he, he is the only branch of government that has power right now. He has power over the military. He, and it's not just him, but a whole group of people that control the White House, have power over the Middle East, except for a few things, one being Putin. And, you know, I know Brother Thomas and I may disagree on that, you know, but I do, I don't see Putin being a backroom, you know, well, he's a Mason too. Well, that, I'm not sure I'm seeing agreement there. There can be wars between Masons as well. So, I'm, yeah, so what I'm seeing is, um, and this has not been spoken before, so I'm, I'm just going to say they, the Congress is not afraid of the blackmail issues coming out. They're afraid of things happening to them or their family that are inexplicable from magic, sorcery, that sort of, you know, the lightning bolt hitting, you know, the wheel falling off the car, the sudden uh, no, notice of cancer, the, um, you know, the sudden death. The, they're, they're deathly afraid of the kinds of things that happen in the first omen. Remember the omen with... It's that kind of thing that, that, that has scared them and scared the, everyone. They've obviously seen some evidence of, of, of all this. So it doesn't matter if Obama's weak domestically. It doesn't matter if everyone's screaming at him. It doesn't matter if, you know, he, he can go confiscate the guns. He can do whatever, anything he likes to do. Again, he had a super majority. He couldn't get anything done because they were, he couldn't get anything done the way he really wanted to. It's only when he got the Republicans. This is impossible, by the way. Through some kind of magic, he was able to roll them and uh, and establish the uh, set the table for com- the complete collapse of the United States and of the world. And if anyone and they're just afraid that if they oppose, <clears throat> something bad will happen to them or their family. So that's what it is. It's the fear of violence and death. Just to show you how out of control your situation is. There are people fighting back, you know, but I mean, this kind of, this tyranny and all this that they're trying to do, domesticating humans in in these countries, you know, cowing them with the Muslim invaders um, and and rapists that are, they're they're coming in in order to rape the the women and order to kill the men because um, that's the only, when you invade, that's what you do. So they've been trained to do that by the, you know, the command and control for ISIS and, and the, uh, the, the refugee slash uh, warriors. Uh, the command and control is our, you know, black ops, retired generals, whatever, that are down with the cause. And they are training, you know, ISIS is a hands-on group of international mercenaries. That's why they all wear masks. <laughs> you know, the, you always see them with masks. <clears throat> And, and all the masks are part of a costume because they have interchangeable costumes. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's all to, to protect their identities. And, you know, you're the ones duped. You, you think ISIS is some organic thing that cropped up out of nowhere. You're an absolute fool. Absolute fool. Complete. Total. Total gullible. Just gullible as can be. No. Command and control. Hollywood producers... John McCain and the rest of the neocons, everybody to destabilize the Middle East, overthrow it, and reorganize the table in, you know, in their new world order the way they want. And so they're throwing the people under the bus, Merkel, Obama, and the UN and the rest, all are in cahoots here, all in concert with these terror attacks and these hoaxes 
Uh, yes, people are getting gunned down with these false flag terror attacks, but it's all been planned. It's all part of the same invasion. It's really sad to watch what happened to the people of Germany because I don't think they're going to come back. You know, they might march around the street, but they're not armed. The invaders are. And they're there to rape and pillage the people, and it's just really sad watching Merkel, you know, approve of the raping of children and, and killing of women after being a, what, Time Woman of the Year? Or what, I, it's just it's insane. So the world's falling apart. And during times like that, ladies and gentlemen, that's where you come in. You see, because now is your time to shine. I know, I know, I, I've, I had this discussion with someone on Twitter where she says, well, the lambs are not allowed to shine because uh, just the way it's set up here. And it's like, yes, I understand no, the situation. But I don't care because you see, the lambs are going to shine. That's part of God's plan to raise up these lambs despite all the odds. But to do it in a seesaw fashion, as is, so I've, always, I've, I've been a witness to his moving, you know, to his moving like that. It's in a seesaw fashion. When they're going down, you're going up. So it's been going sideways for a long time. You know, me and Brother Thomas and others, we, we perceive this rising in the lambs. Well, the lambs have risen up. Here you are with your, you know, with your footprint on the Internet and everywhere else. I mean, ev everywhere I go, if I say lamb, everyone knows what I mean. Well, they knew before, but they nod and winked. Now they, they, they're like, oh, yeah. So there's a respect there that hasn't been there before because they know that God's anointed can do many amazing things and beat the crap out of them. So they want to keep you out to stop you from using your gifts because they know what... <clears throat> ah. <clears throat> Hello, Froggy. My God, that's, that's every time I know there's something being said. <clears throat> it's going to go on the internet. That frog comes in. I mean, it didn't come in the last two. I must have spoken for six hours today already. Not, not only that, but I'm practicing bass. To, I'm coming up with some kind of a thing for... for uh, I've, I had it mapped out in my head yesterday. I've got it basically what I want to do. You know, I've got a thing. I've got a song, and it, and it wants to be played on bass. And see, I just want to see how it is composing on a bass. Last time I composed by doing chords, right? By playing chords on a guitar, and I composed that way. So now I want to see, you know, about bass, and then, and then let's see what happens. The San Bernardino song... I'm not quite sure what that one was about. It uh, had a certain resonance, but it was really more for the world rather than, you know, the lambs. So, you know, it was, it was just more of a, like a, like a, like a modern day crime Western, <clears throat> you know, kind of feel. And it was just very general. It just, it was just an entertainment is all. But um, we captured that rock and roll rawness of the, of the past that we all liked. You know, that's what we wanted. And that's what we got. We wanted that vintage thing and, and, and we got it. But uh, laughing stock that that seems to be I, I'm not even even promoting I'm not doing anything with it I'm just kind of trying out speaker with it and things like you know and, and I'm seeing it uh, people kind of embracing it I don't know how far that'll go we'll see but I guess it does resonate with you because you guys get it you know it's pretty it's pretty I mean the lyrics you know this my friend. You know, he put it up on our YouTube and, it, and he put the lyrics there. I'm like, brother, I don't think people are going to understand these lyrics. <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm, you look at them on the screen and I get it. They're very sharp. You know, they're very, very, very poignant, very accurate in a certain kind of poetic, you know what I mean, lyrical kind of way. And um, we'll see. We'll see because I, 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 do, I do so enjoy doing things like that. You know, I do so enjoy, you know, fighting back with music. I so enjoy, you know, because, and I've, you know, I've also noticed there's some people like on SoundCloud, you know, are supposed to like, if you, you know, you listen to their track and you make your comments, then, 
then, you know, yeah, it's, it's the courteous thing to do is to, you know, try to comment back on people that come on you. And if you don't, then they don't come back next time. So you, you know, you, you create a little network of people that will listen and you'll listen to theirs and, and support each other. So I've noticed a few that um, since my Christmas song, I, I haven't seen hide nor hair of them, even though I've been so nice to them. So I'm like, okay, spiritual welfare on SoundCloud. Ooh, I'm going to get all upset about it. Not. It's okay. I'll go over there and I'll, I'll compliment it every time. I'll do 100 to zero. Just to pile on the hot coals. You know, I'm not, I love you, you hate me. That's what I, I love it when it gets like that. Spiritual Warfare 101, okay? So that's, you know, you've been well prepared in those kind of things. The Obama thing, you feel frustrated and, and don't. You know, you were seeing, you know, the, the Congress get rolled and you're seeing the military get rolled and you see the, the other agencies get rolled. But there is this blowback too on a bigger force than Obama and a bigger force than the rest of them. Obama, from a young age, um, being a communist and raised by communists, uh, was groomed to manage the communist takeover of the United States, okay, and the world, for a global communist, you know, caliphate, then beyond the caliphate, the new world order of the few elites, which Obama would be the so-called educated intelligentsia elite that runs things, and then the altered DNA drone slaves that do the bidding of the uh, elites who are in the fields of Elysium, enjoying themselves. Fritz Lang talked about this in 1927 in his great film, Metropolis. Uh, you know, we had, you know, 1984 by George Orwell. I mean, it's not like we haven't known there's a plot to enslave every man, woman, and child. And this is the form it's taken. And they're going at a breakneck speed because they feel they have but a short time. Who is it, ladies and gentlemen, that feels... He has but a short time. That's right. You know who it is. It's uh, because the devil knows he has but a short time. You understand that. And so collectively, you know, they represent the devil. I can tell you this. No good fruit comes from a corrupt tree. They will never have a new world order, some peaceful kind of utopia, because they're violent. They don't have it in them. They're corrupt. Everything they create will reflect that corruption. There will be a facade, yes, like there is now, but underneath, it, it's rotten to the core. There is no reason for God to therefore sustain it. He sustains to the extent that his lambs are upon the earth. That was the deal we learned with Abraham. <clears throat> and, and so it's so important. Um, your enemy. Uh, um, your enemy. I, I really don't know if I can find it. Um, but we all have a short time. <clears throat> I'm having some trouble with my um, throat. I, I don't have that all day long and, and never. It's only when I turn on the this and it doesn't happen unless the podcast will go forth. Um, and I'm trying to find a, a scripture here to lay on you. And I will find it. And I'm sorry for any interruptions. That happens when there is something good about to happen. And um, <clears throat> while you have light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. In other words, but, but, but the, the main thing is, while you have light, believe in that light. Isn't that interesting? New Agers could, could steal this. This is something I came across the other day and I'm like, Wow. While you, while you have light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. Believe in the light that you may be the ch What do you suppose, um, you know, John 12, th uh, 36 means there. While you have light, yet a little while the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. 
For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While you have light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. The children of light. Is that what we are? And ultimately, is the new Jerusalem us, our transformation into beings of light, literally? Is that what we are, children of light? And we're to believe in the light. And we know that when John said light in the beginning, the true light, capital L, is Jesus Christ. He's the true light. And the darkness comprehendeth it what? Not. Now, if we go back in John to the first chapter of the Gospel of John. Again, let me have John number one, please. No, don't do that. Okay, I will just go there on my own. Now, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. You know, and, and, and basically this is also the word of God. Now, there was a, then when John the Baptist is coming, it says, the same came for witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. But he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but you're, we are born of God. And if we're born of God, then we are the children of the light. Light is what describes God. Children of the light, to believe in that light. In other words, we may not say the word light too often because we think it means like new age, love and light. But light is really the source of all things. We are the source of all things. We, in, in essence, we have God, but we are God. We are the light. We have to verse, I mean, we're, we're, we're God, but, you know, not to think, well, I am God, you know, separate from anything. But, I mean, we, we make up this light. <clears throat> we're children of light, but if you don't receive the light, then you are a child of what? Darkness. And what happens to the darkness? They don't know what they're doing. They don't know where they're going. And so they have these plans of the new world order, but they come from darkness. They have not light, though in their Masonic lodges they say, I want more light, but we are the light that they seek. Yet they want to do away with us so that they will remain in darkness, even though they don't know where they go. They don't know what they're doing. So when it comes to social engineering, tyranny, mass death, uh, creating, um, you know, soldier inv invasion, pretending they're refugees to rape and pillage Europe and the United States to, to reset the, the deck through violence, they will only beget violence to themselves. There will be a bigger, badder dog, a bigger, badder foe that will decimate them. And on that day, ladies and gentlemen, you can call that Revelation 18 if you like, which is the fall of Babylon, because they are Babylon, which is darkness and which is ignorance. But on that day, do not be part of them because you don't want to be, you know, captured with the plague. My course, he brought up the, the genetic changes that happen to people where, where if you're not found in the Lamb's Book of Life, if, if you're not found in the Lamb's Book of Life, if you're not found in the Light's Book of Life, then that means your DNA is altered. And so there are these scorpion type things that will sting men, sting them, sting them, but they want to die and they can't because they obviously have some kind of 
You know, they've taken something that gives them some kind of immortality. Something to, sub, I put that in quotes, you know. But they can't die to escape these horrible things that happen to them. I had said a thing about David Bowie earlier. That, you know, that there was talk about his using, and I've talked about it as well, from that witness on the airplane, um, you know, uh, life extension technologies, et cetera, et cetera. And in the midst of that, of course, trying to cure cancer, and then looking on a video that I saw like it was 30 years old, it wasn't really computer effects or anything. It was, it was a, a live performance. And I, I was quite amazed at the results that he'd been getting. And then rumors had it that he was using stem cells from fetuses, from the aborted fetuses and all that. I don't want to be disrespectful today. I just want to propose something. I'm, I mean, you know, I've got no reason to be, you know, I, he was, uh, I was not really a fan, but I was in a band that was a Ziggy Stardust tribute band. All they did is the album Ziggy Stardust, and they would perform that album. And I, we all, I had to, when I auditioned, I had to play the part perfectly. And everyone did. It sounded exactly like the record. And then they would have their friends come by the warehouse area that was rented for our rehearsals. And they would hang around and get high on drugs and get drunk because they just wanted to play for their friends. And eventually I left because it was like, well, if you're not going to be gigging or at least playing at the state fair or something, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm all about you know playing live. So, But I mean, when I think back on that memory of how serious they took every word and these guys all looked very hayseed. You know, it was in Kansas, out in the middle of a, a wheat field somewhere, you know, where, where you have just all of a sudden mini storage set up, and they rented a whole bunch of these mini storage things, created like a warehouse space. Uh, then <clears throat> knocked all the walls down between each garage thing, and then it was this whole open, it was like a stage. It was very cool what they did, but there's nobody, you know, there's nothing, a couple apartment buildings, you know, maybe a 7-Eleven of, some miles away, but very rural. And like I say, these hazy guys, and they're just, and I'm like, they're enamored with this very androgynous David Bowie and the very androgynous sort of, you know, show of Ziggy Stardust. And they're in, you know, practically in overalls and cowboy hats. And I'm just was, it was so curious to me. It was, it was like when I would watch, um, you know, a South Korean musician, uh, do country western. I, I had that same kind of weird curiosity. There's nothing wrong with them doing that music. I mean, it's, that's a, almost that that's almost a prejudicial thing on my part. You know that I, it was such an odd thing seeing um, Korean uh, country. I've seen enough now that it's no big deal anymore. But it, when I saw the first one, I had seen. Well, it was similar with this. It was like I didn't understand. You know what I mean? So I was kind of very curious to. Um, but that was it. I mean, that was my, you know, my stint of learning all those songs and performing the album. And even we had pauses that had to be the same amount of time as when you have a record on, you know, the pause between the next track. We had to have that same, what is it, two or three second pause? We had to have that same pause and then start up again. And everyone had to know the set list, so nobody called the tune. You would just go to the next thing, autom like robotically. <laughs> that was so bizarre. I, I look back on it now, of course, fondly. And you know, I was happy to have won the audition, which I, you know, I, I don't know if I had much comp. I had a few drummers that were competing, uh, but I, I seemed to be able to adapt easier, you know, to, to, to uh, what they wanted to do. You know, a lot of drummers have their own style, and it's just hard for them to be if they're not in that style already you know what I mean it's with me it's like I don't have any one set style so that's always been the issue with me there is no set style it just will be whatever you want it to be and uh, so anyway the, but you know rest in peace David Bowie I, I've got nothing more else to say except that he's worth maybe a billion dollars dead a lot more worth dead than alive I don't know if there's hanky panky involved I'm not going to say there is. I will say this, what I think, is that it's possible that if this life extension thing was really going on, that it may have been an attempt to cure cancer at the same time, or it might have ironically exacerbated the cancer in some way. 
which would be an irony of ironies, would it not? If you're going for life extension, it's working, you're looking younger, everything's looking really great because you're using the stem cells and all that. And then it turns out you die of cancer earlier than you would have because you were trying to extend your life. Would that be a God type of irony? Uh, you bet it would. We'll never know. We'll never know the truth, but there's you know, circumstantial evidence and um, worthy of investigation, and maybe someone will do that, but I think they want to leave well enough alone and let him be a cultural icon. Dead at 69, that's the, the year my father died. He died prematurely at 69 years old. And, um, you know, those of us who are lo looking up toward that age, wow, you know, we could all go a lot sooner if this World War III thing kicks off, but there's some very interesting silences that I want to bring to your attention. Number one, um, the whole ISIS bombing thing seems to just be very much muted right now. The reporting on it is almost non-existent. And the, 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 the threat of Russia, Russia, Russia doing all the sorties and saving the day, not quite a story that's running around right now. Maybe it's being suppressed. I don't know. But something is weird. Something is afoot. Erdogan tried to proclaim himself, I guess, whatever, the, the king of the world, the Antichrist. Is he having now competition with Obama, who is being groomed possibly for the U.N.? Or maybe Obama won't take that station at the U.N. He'd rather hang around and be a, uh, you know, a mucky muck in, in wherever he is. I don't know. I don't, um, I don't get involved in, you know, whether, whether all this is coming to an end the way that the Bible is suggesting of a fall of Babylon, a new world order, the microchip. Um, you know, in the book of Daniel, it's really looking at Jerusalem as the center of the world. And that the Antichrist will proclaim himself God in the Holy of Holies. And that's, you know, the, the um, you know, a, a, a visual that's hard for me to forget because I still believe that Jerusalem is the center of the world in, in, in many, on many different levels. But I can't talk about it because there's so much baggage with, you know, Bible prophecy wars, people arguing back and forth, and people thinking that if you say that you're some kind of Zionist, and there's so much baggage in every kind of way, or they say that the book of Revelation fulfills in a spiritual way, and it, it's already been fulfilled with the Roman Empire, and then, you know, it fulfills again with the New Jerusalem, which is really us being transformed, and so waiting for Godot, waiting for Godot, waiting for Godot, waiting for Godot, waiting for Godot over and over again. And I got so frustrated with people that had either just spiritual or just mechanical that I, I had to just kind of go on my own, because I... I couldn't, you know, throw out the physical because God made the physical. So I think there's a blend, and I think when God is ready for us to see, I mean, let God be true and every man a liar. All these timelines are going to be wrong. You know what I mean? All these people calling for 2018, they're wrong. Every, it's, or maybe they're not. You know, it's not here yet, so I'm not going to say. But I will say this. The power being ceded to Obama over all the other branches of government is what I recognize to be sorcery, and by trickery and sorcery, it seems this communist revolution is brought into existence because it owes its very spirit to Satanism. Even though the minions are all atheists, the insiders are all Satanists. And it's, um, it's, 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 it's amazing to watch these brain-dead morons just kind of line up with their Zeke Heil you know, in all these agencies, you know, kind of like, you know, therefore the revolution, you know, it's like, hey, you know, it was like the, uh, 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 what was it, the uh, Captain America, where they were nodding and winking at each other. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm in on it, too. You know, we're going to kill millions of people that don't agree with us. <laughs> and that's kind of like what all this is, a prelude to this killing. And I, I don't want to see it be gunned down. I, I don't want to see you guys, you know, be killed uh, you know, because of it, but I have no control over it. You know what I mean? God, God knows. And if he's showing me the rising of the lambs right now, which looks like it will be exponential, then he's showing me at the same time the fall of the world, which seems to be exponential the other way. And I, I just have to yield to the Lord to, to, to seek the answers, not go on my own understanding, not go. I've read through the book of Revelation now a bunch of times. And uh, the book of Daniel, 
all the chapters and, and, and you know, Ezekiel 38 and 39. I've been, been going through all this. And I, my, my conclusion is not to conclude. There's too much, in, in, from, from a literal standpoint, there's too much disagreement in cross-referencing the scriptures. There's too much stuff that, I mean, you can make it fit, but you have to really massage it into place. So I don't want to go there either. You know, people say, well, what they really mean is, I know people that do that with the Bible, and it drives me nuts. When they when they go on and say, uh, I, I say, well, we don't have the temple built, and they go, oh yes, they're already doing sacrifice. They they built it underneath. There's a they, they find some way of saying it's been rebuilt. Let's say, so it's all good to go, and it, they make up a story that is just ridiculous. They're really in the basement doing sacrifices again or something, and I and I just. Um, you know, then there's also the the quote Illuminati trying to bring about, you know, the the, uh, the the end of the world in Christian terms to really enhance the mind control. So you've got that aspect too. So I've concluded not to conclude. When let, let God be true and every man a liar was what a brother laid down that that scripture on me. I was like, Amen, brother. That is exactly. You know, let God be true. God knows. You see. And all of us in our, in, our, in, in our speculation, if we call it more than speculation, then you see we become liars if it doesn't unfold exactly the way we think it should. So I would be very careful about, you know, the game of who the PC, the a, the PC is, who the PC is, who the AC is, who the man of sin is and all that and, 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 uh, and, uh, and, and to realize that, that, you know, whatever is in your head, you know, whatever story you have unfolding, um, it, we're in a territory now where no one, no one knows anything. It's like the Powerball thing. Nobody won. Now it's going to go up to one, one point whatever billion. And this kind of ridiculous money in a time where money is drying up everywhere. It is just, I'm living in this, you know, LSD was never as, as psychedelic as what I'm seeing now. Now, will Obama's power increase beyond that? Now, he's gotten a new, fresh load of power, of sorcery power. I mean, power to move, I mean, the kind of power that you can move nations, planets, fly, walk through walls. You know, it's that level stuff. And that's what has people scared. You know, not, I'm not saying literally you can walk through a wall, but I mean, it's, the power is on that level. You know, the transmutation of matter, you know, that sort of power. And um, the people are scared. You know, they, 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 they're afraid of this demonic, occultic power more than just, you know, retribution from people because of um, political differences. This, this is more scary, They've, right? Because they feel like from, from anywhere they could be killed. And it, and it would be from, from, from nowhere. From, uh, they, they just feel that Obama's, and, and, and the people that he's involved with are so strong in the sorcery and in in, in that kind of mystical, occultic power that they're afraid for their very lives. They're, they're afraid to even put their minds on Obama at all. They're afraid to say anything. And, of course, from this corrupt tree will come nothing but destruction, not, not, not a new world order. It will look like there, we're on the way to it and we'll have the, you know, obviously be chipped and... Uh, you know, are the ones who do, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll probably roll out the mark and they, they probably have the guillotines ready to roll out and all the rest of the folklore we've had about it all. Um, probably there's a lot of truth to it. Um, but they have to roll it out in their mind exactly as the Bible says because it is a war against the God of the Bible and everything is that which is against God the Creator. And so everything would be structurally the opposite of what God would do. So they have to actually use God and the word, scriptures to fulfill, to influence all their plans so they line up. Otherwise, why would they do that? Because obviously they know the truth. Who God is, who Jesus is. He's the lamb. He's the light. The lamb is who reigns over all of it. And the light is that which creates all of it. Understand? Okay, so what we want to do is we cling to the lamb 
the lamb. And if you're, a, so when they say the lambs have been prevented from, from really success or shining or all that, yes, I've, I'm familiar with that kind of shunning. What's your point? I am beloved of God. You are beloved of God. I'm a child of the Most High God. You are a child of the Most High God. We are children of the light. We are light. We are the source of everything they seek. And ironically, we come stripped down of power, stripped down of accolades, stripped down of you know, trophies, stripped down of whatever it is. But we're still the true light. They can do nothing without us. Nothing, not even breathe. Yet they seek to destroy us and anything of God, thinking they could live in some sort of darkness and vacuum, that they could lord it over other people. And I have news for them. There would be no people, not even the people that are thinking they're going to lord over something, if the children of light are cut off. There would be no them, and I, and, I, and I give you as evidence the Sodom and Gomorrah formula, which is how low it must go before God walks away. <clears throat> how low the population of lambs must go. I give you the story of Noah. I give you the prophecy of Jesus, where he said, you know, as in the days of Noah, so it will be in the, in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. The coming of the Son of Man is the end of the world. Amen. All reverence, all glory goes to God. So because he made all this, he's brought us this far, don't you think he'll see us through the rest of the way? Don't you think we have to get more faith now? Because we're, if we are the light, if we're the children of light, what the hell are we complaining about? I mean, what are we doing? Why are we thinking in such terrestrial terms? As, you know, as if what they do to us or not do to us, either way, is very important. It's, it's not important. Justice comes by the Lord. We can't force justice. That's not our, that's, that would be blasphemous. What we are to do is we have our Lord and we wait on him and he brings it, you know. It's, it's you know, for the people of this world to act in carnal ways and to, by their clenched fists and their, and their brute beast ways, they get what they want done, done. But the Lord is effortless. He does whatever he wants. We're his children. We're not here to be something of a, you know, to be performing seals in, a, in, in some kind of fallen world. We're here as sojourners passing through, as witnesses of the truth and bearers of that, wit and bearers of truth. We are the children of light. If we do nothing but just stand here, we have fulfilled God's word. A capisce. I still spoke with Uncle Tino yesterday, Francesca's uncle. And he's got a really thick Sicilian accent. It's from Sicily. And he invited me to go, me and Trish, to go with him and his wife to, you know, to hang out. And uh, this is tempting, Chianti. And then, uh, and then drive. He said, if, he, if you're there in June or late May, you could drive down the Amalfi Coast all the way to Sicily, and you could these little hotels and things. They're never booked. If you wait another couple of weeks, they are booked, and you can't get in. You have to make reservations a year in advance. But you could just go to each place, knock on the door, whatever you know, the little hotel. And uh, you know, in Europe, it's very interesting along the Amalfi Coast and the, the French Riviera and everything. You've never seen anything like this. I mean, you might have been to Miami. You might have been in New York. Or, or L.A. or San Diego, but but you've never seen so many little cottages, you know, restaurants, um, and all that. You've never seen so much of that, you, you know, boat slips for yachts. You've never. I mean, Europe is. A, you know, you may not know much about it, but it's, you know, it, it's quite something. I mean, you know, all the way down the Amalfi Coast is nothing but you know, they're cliffs. Everything's up on the cliffs, right? But. Um, 
you know, it's 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 just wall. It's all about tourism. It's all about the, you know the restaurants and the, the, the little hotels, the boutique hotels, all the way down. You know, and then then you get to Naples, and then you keep on and going, and then eventually you get to uh, Sicily. And uh, Tino has family there, so we go to uh, you know I get I'm not sure where in Sicily, um, but we go to you know old Sicily, you know, and. Uh, and then I, I suppose, you know, that would be about it for me. And then I'd, I'd you know, fly back. But my feeling is I got to visit my daughter there. And uh, I'm going to have to, you know, check out her boyfriend or whatever. It's just <laughs> that, yeah, you know, I got to be involved. I can't just be over here and not see her, you know. So we'll see, you know. Um, interesting. I thought about Italy and I warning Francesca I was saying you know this watch out for this these refugees these they're not really a lot of them are stealth warriors you know coming in to destabilize uh the uh the cities and everything to call for world government and she knew she already knows that she already knows that she goes well it's not too bad then about a month later she goes it's bad I go jogging and the the, the men are on the corner staring at me I'm like you need to protect yourself daughter you need to protect yourself the, those those men standing there staring at you, they could, you know, they, they, if they grabbed you and tried to rape you, and if they raped you and did all that, beat you up on the street, nobody would do anything. And then they wouldn't get in trouble, even if you wind up in the hospital. Don't be stupid. But see, she's being overrun too, where she lives. They're, they're on all the corners. It's terrible what they've done, because these are not refugees. You know, they they're, they say, oh, they're these innocent people. No, they're not. They're bringing in soldiers, you know, and 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 uh, those soldiers are, I, it's unfortunate for the people who really are refugees. I'm sure there are a few, but the main ones are troublemakers and they don't want to work. They just want to take and rob from people and rape them and rape children and kill them. And it's it's just terrible, just terrible. Just, I can't imagine a worse evil, can you? And the fact that our president is involved in doing it and nobody can do anything, they're paralyzed. Doesn't that go to the supernatural, amazing, beyond belief, satanic power? Yes, it does. And if we look at it that way, hopefully the Lord will start to reveal more of his plan. That's what I want to know. But I can't do it in my own understanding by listening to other people. I have to, I got to kind of feel my way along because that take out ISIS or become a parking lot thing, that's still there. And the, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the equilibrium people, they're still there. They're more powerful than this communist revolutionaries. So to me, it looks like a big clash, a big civil war, some, some kind of thing. And um, you know, they predict civil war in Europe. I'm like, how could there be a civil war? There's, the people are disarmed. As long as you don't give your guns up here in the United States, even if they call for confiscation, you don't give them up. And you know what that means, okay? As long as you don't give them up, um, you, you, you may not be raped and pillaged in, in the way that Europe or conquered in that way. And they know that, so they're trying to set the table for, a, you know, everyone is mentally ill in America. You know, anyone who believes in the end times is mentally ill. Anyone who's a patriot is mentally ill. Anyone who listens to Alex Jones is, you know, Radio, for example, is mentally ill. Anyone who, who, um, who is a libertarian is mentally ill. Anyone who is, uh, 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 agrees with the founding of the United States is mentally ill. Anyone who believes in the Constitution is mentally ill. Anyone, you know what I mean? And then just, just make that the pretext. I know it's wild, but I mean, I mean, I know that's what they want. Will they get it? I don't, you know, there seems to be a big blowback here. I've, I, you know, on the other hand, I've never seen so many guns purchased. I've never seen the NRA more popular. It's always been a negative thing all my life. It's now popular, which is which is amazing. And I'm seeing people from the left and the right, you know, buying guns and arming themselves like crazy. And I don't think they're going to spend, you know, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars on on an AR-15 or whatever and ammo and all that, and just go ahead and when the, when someone knocks on the door, oh, here you go. Uh, I don't think so. And I don't think they think so either, or they would uh, have been already going up and down the street. So we have a very interesting situation here. And Obama's tears were crocodile tears. He used a, a certain gel substance they have in, in Hollywood, because I've worked on 
movies before where there's two there's one drop you put right in the eyes for the immediate tears falling out you know so they say start a take they just need to get that shot as an insert or two um, they have something you, you rub under your eye before the scene starts and your eye will tear you know during the scene and you rub it under your eyes and we had that and that's what he used do you want me to do a screencast of it and point the stuff out? I can actually get to get the product and show you what it is. I'd be happy to, you know. I seem to be the one that, you know, I look at the costumes, I look at the design. Love to know where the costumes are being designed. You know, love to know who's sewing. Love to know who, who's, who's, where the fabrics are coming from. Love to know, um, you know, like, you know, a lot of that stuff. Love to know how they're doing these dolly shots and these, these overhead shots and these, um, you know, these, these, these kind of dolly shots moving the camera in, not being on a steady cam, but actually a dolly shot. Low, you know, very low, you know, you have to put the camera on tracks and move it slowly toward the, uh, to the guy that's going to be beheaded and all that. Um, just a lot of top-notch production going on and, um, you know, can't all be going on there. With what I hear is a retired general, and I don't have his name, but retired general, military, ex-military, you know, Mercs, all United States military is running ISIS daily. <laughs> oh, boy, it doesn't get better than that. And that's why I think it's a Hollywood connection, not a European connection, not a, not a you know, well, all these countries are contributing, and really Israel is running the show. I've heard all about that, Israel running the show and all the, and this stuff and all the countries that are contributing. Why is Israel treated as any is worse than, say, the other Western nations who are contributing to ISIS? ISIS is a 100% Western confabulation, but a confabulation of the United States for the purpose of the destabilization of the Middle East for the, you know, this, this global governance eventually to come. And that's what, you know, you're seeing. And it's brutal and it's awful and... Um, I just feel sorry for people, you know. I feel so sorry for the German people. I just feel so. I just, I just can't imagine. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a. If anything, it's a testimony uh, and a testament to 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 being an armed uh, population, because otherwise, that same thing will happen to you. Uh, I read an article, I, the, the, and so the liberals have gone insane. I mean, I read an article the other day that said they, they feel more comfortable with um, criminals have, being armed than, than law-abiding citizens. That's how far they're going. That's how far into insanity they've gone. Well, that's how low their IQs are as well. You know, the common sense is abandoned. But anyway, here we, we don't deal with such broad topics where we're, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always dealing with the, the spiritual warfare because I go out there and things happen that are not explained in the encyclopedia. They're not explained on Wiki. It's not explained on Google. Um, things are, that are unexplainable happen. As if I'm being watched and tracked and, you know, things inserted in my, in my direction, in my way here and there, and then they're taken away, and then they never really did exist, but they did. And um, I've been dealing with that since I was a child, and, and it must be because we are children of light. When I say lamb now in polite company, they know exactly what I mean. They no longer nod and wink. That's a huge difference. And I believe it's because they kind of know the jig is up and they're scared to death. They're scared, and they ought to be, that their way of life and their comforts and their whatever are about to be ripped from them. I mean, Europe is a, kind of a precursor. This is serious stuff in serious times, but there is this, when I say rising of the lambs, what I mean is there's this power that is also supernatural, that also is the same power that can, of, 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 that's an unlimited power source, as strong as the universe, that resides in each one. Though it has been inaccessible, it's there in each one. 
And um, who are the lambs and who aren't? It's the wheat and the tares. I don't know. You know, we we go along. I find a lamb every once in a while. They're not as many. It's not equal wheat and tares. It's a few lambs and lots of tares. But, I mean, I see them, and sometimes they say they're atheist or they're, they don't know anything and they don't seem particularly religious. Sometimes they do. It's just... It's a thing that you 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 know that you you discern that you it's it's the oddest thing in the world you know it's it's just amazing. Um, they say that a lamb is is made not born you know the, through your free will decision to serve or not serve the beast system. That's not correct. The lamb is born that way, and there's. The beast system could do everything they want to either kill them or indoctrinate them or do whatever they, but it just doesn't work for whatever reason. They just can't be hypnotized. They can't be mind controlled. They can't be initiated. They can't, nothing. It just, it's, right? And they can't, and they seem to have protection against being killed because otherwise all the rabbits would be killed, wouldn't they? In the meek is the strength in the world. All the rabbits out here are outnumbered by the coyotes. Coyotes are hungry. There should be no rabbits. Why are there rabbits? Kind of makes you wonder. If you're a children of light, it's important for God to have his children of light on the earth. Would you not agree, ladies and gentlemen, that that would be an important thing if you're the children of the Most High God, you're the sons and daughters of the Most High God, and yes, you've been kicked around by people that think they're the entitled ones. They're the, they're the important ones. Noting, teaching you that there's a difference between you and them. Teaching you that there's a difference between you. And the, how did you learn there was a difference between the lambs and the, and, and the rest? Because you were taught that by the way they behaved toward you. And so you learned the hard way. It's terrible. You, 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 you will be, a, yes, God will avenge you. You know, there's, there, there's, there will be justice, you know, but not in your terms. You know, we are to be as gentle as a dove, but as wise as a serpent. I think that wisdom... We have innately within us, but God has to choose the moment to release that wisdom because it's far more than the world has ever seen or known. Man seems to think, you know, carnal man, man on the earth, you know, man in the secret societies, man in the guild, man from the fraternity, you know, they seem to think that their own understanding and their own intellectual process is the same as God. You know, it's from on high. And so when they get a consensus, they feel that that's like, the, for them, the word of God, even if it's a delusional consensus. And so, as the Bible says so clearly, you know, those of the darkness, the children of darkness, which rule the present age, um, do not know withereth, whither they goeth, right? Because they're in darkness. They don't know, right? So that gives them a certain comfort that whatever, whichever direction they go, they feel they're right in doing so because they do not want to look at the facts that the light would bring. And the fact is that we all, we're in a fallen world and we need a savior and we need to be finding the exit Because it's not about what happens on this planet, really. Ultimately. Because this is not anything more than just a castle made of sand on the, on the sea uh, as the tide is beginning to rise. It's a temporary situation at best. So what, what's our purpose here? We have a certain limited period of time in which we are to find out what reality really is, what life really is, and, and, to, and to decide to embrace that truth. We don't have a lot of time to wander around aim, aim, aimlessly 
and work effortlessly toward a goal that will aggrandize our egos. We don't have time to do that, you know. Uh, we don't have time to, to, to spend a whole life work plying a trade, only to be kicked in the teeth later on in old age, um, and then wonder what the meaning of life is. We, we just don't have time for that. Every, no, no matter how lauded one man's career is, it's meaningless in, in the real scheme of things. I know they worked hard. I know they earned it. I know, you know, yeah, there's some very talented people out there. But, they're, but what they've done, I've always wondered, how do you get fed if you, all you do is practice and practice and you become the big soccer player, you become the, you know, great musician, the pianist, the whatever. What happens? Where, where does that go? Do you just keep performing until you keel over and that's the meaning of life for you? And, you know, to my way of thinking... That's all very nice, but that in and of itself is not what reality is, and it it has no bearing because you're gone. Yeah, but you they have a legacy that lives on. So what? A legacy, in other words, an, an illusory legacy. That if the, the the that that in any other dimension would be meaningless. A legacy that uh, they really did something when they will never see it. I think of Van Gogh when I think of this legacy. I think of Van Gogh that never saw his success, labored in the dark, and wanted success so desperately I didn't understand the rejection, and that took an ugly toll on him. Obviously, he was some sort of a lamb. And, uh, no, he drank absinthe and that drove him nuts. He was really worshipping the devils and everything else. Ah, no, I, th I think I, I can see a little better than that. And he, he died unrealized, you know, because his goal was material. And that was his, and that drove him mad and it drove him into sorrow. Now, what does it matter? Because his consciousness is all that matters. So he's gone. So whatever people do or don't do regarding his career, whether they spend $150 million on some stupid painting he did or not, it's got nothing to do with, with the source of the issue, Van Gogh himself. So therefore, it's meaningless. I'm going to build up my legacy so when I'm gone, they're, they're, they're going to be stuck with it. It's going to make me satisfied to die because that legacy will be on the earth for a long time. Really, that sounds like Esau. That's an Esau thing. Only a fool would think such a thing. When you're gone, it doesn't matter what you did or didn't do. The fool and the wise man are equal in death. Period. You know, if you really want to have a legacy, I, I say do this as a prequel. Lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, treasure in the kingdom of God by going on the spiritual walk and the, and the nurturing and the fulfillment and the, and the feeding that you are given. And let your walk be that uh, treasures and legacy and everything else in another dimension that you have, you have sown and you will reap. Life eternal. Oh, everyone gets life eternal, Zeph. You're wrong about that. Well, with the New Jerusalem teaching, one could say that one life is extinguished and another is created. That which was old no longer exists, but that which God carried through, i.e. the children of light, do exist in the new world. You, you just can't get around God. He's going to demand a decision from every single one of us, you know, He's, every single one of us, one way or the other, will be on our knees before him. There is just no one that will not be. The pain
pain and the suffering that the leadership of this world has caused has triggered God's wrath. I'll leave you with that because that's what I just, I just got that just, uh, it has triggered a movement of God, a thing of God. I look back through the podcast that I've done because I, oh, by the way, folks, I'm done for now. I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm, you know, as my assistant Angie pointed out, I should sleep eventually. I just keep being concerned for people out there. I mean, I really understand you're going through it. I, you know, I, I, I send you my prayers and I, and I ask you to pray over one another and pray over me as well. <clears throat> it's just um, that my good news for you is that the lambs are going up in terms of, you know, I can't explain it. It's like this thing is being taken off of you. You are really something that that if you knew what you were, you wouldn't you wouldn't say another thing. You'd feel so embarrassed, and uh, so I don't want us to spend too much time buying into their perception of us, if you know what I mean, or their paradigm of a world. You know what they constitute as success or not success. I know there's some very mad people out there that feel has been cut off by life, cut off unfairly because they're lambs, cut off. Because the, 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 the world is somehow at war with God. Yes, the, it is. It's an ancient war. It's nothing personal. But the Lord will, will take care of you. The Lord will, will give you so much that you'll, you'll, you'll eat those words. Of um, Your Job question to God, you know. You see, you're, 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 you're taking it in your own understanding. And, and you, you know, you, we cannot question God. We, we just must find a way. And if we have bitterness in our hearts, you know, see there the Lord has exposed us. Once again, that bitterness we must remove from our hearts. It's got to be removed. Oh, well, oh, well, you know, it's got to be removed, people. He won't abide that. It's got to be cleansed. There could just be nothing in the end but love. And it's it's just amazing how... Wrapped up in a, and I know, I, I I hear you. I have a person that just emailed me that said that she can't let go of the hate. And I understand. I Look, I, you know, I'm not saying that you all have to be just superhumans right now. But you are, what I'm saying is you are superhumans that have been in the opposite disguise while here on earth. For the purpose of God. Something he wants to do with you. Now that's enough. That's that's big. That's something I have to stop because that's like Selah. Okay? Selah. Right? Selah. And I'll see you next time. Let's see if we can get out of the... Uh, let's see if we can get this thing done now. Let us see. You know, I'm going to try to find my studio. Okay, here I am in Studio B. And um, how would you like a little sound effect? <laughs> the wrath of God. <laughs> Never mistake that. <laughs> and I will see you.